All right, Shalom. This is Brother Kasha Kuala coming back at you with another lesson. Uh, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Kodash, Okar. Give the double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. We well, peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. And I'm going to get into some prophecy pertaining around how the kingdom's going to be. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and jump right up to it to Micro Forum 1. It says, but in, but in the last days, it shall come to pass. I'm going to read it through. That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow un, unto it. Okay? But it says, in the last days, it shall come to pass. Meaning, this is a prophecy that is set to, set to happen. Okay? All right? And it says, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the mountain in the top of the mountains okay so when you uh when you look and see that word mountain it's it's, it's representation of um it's representation of um, a government okay i know it says hill mountain hill country mountain but we have spiritual eyes and spiritual ears so we can uh discern what uh what it's actually speaking about it says that the mountain of the house of the lord shall be established in the top of the mountains so the lord's government is going to be established upon every government okay and it shall be exalted above the hills again it shall be higher than every government and the people shall flow onto it all right so um i'm gonna get a little uh, uh a precept to back that okay um now, in fact, get a precept to back this whole thing. It's Isaiah chapter 40 and verse uh, 4. It says, every valley shall be exalted. Okay? When you look at a valley, it's mountains, something in between. And here's a good visual, uh, visualization of it. So here, right here, where my mouse is, that's the valley. And you, obviously, you see the mountains. But a valley is in a low place. Okay? And the mountains are exalted above that valley. Okay. All right. It says, "Every valley shall be exalted." Now, when we speak, when it says "valley," every valley shall be exalted. You gotta go back up to verse two to see who he's speaking to. Okay. It says, "Well, verse one, come for ye, come for ye, my people, say if your power, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem." When he looked that word "comfortably" up, it means speaking to the minds of the of, of Jerusalem. So that gives you another indication that Jerusalem is a people before it's a place, okay? Even when you go to uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, I think it talks about we're the temple of the Most High. Also, when you go to Galatians, where it says Jerusalem is the mother of us all, okay? But someone has to be in a specific set of land to make it that, that land, if you know what I'm saying, okay? We're not Israelites because of a land. We're Israelites because of, because of a man. Okay, a person. So Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So this is speaking to Israel. Okay, so Isaiah 40 and 4 it says, Every valley shall be exalted. So now we know who he's speaking to. Okay, Jerusalem. And Jerusalem would be considered that valley or the people. Okay, a valley, like I said again, and as you can see, is a low place. And right now our people are in a low estate. Okay, so we are that valley. Okay. But it says, every valley shall be exalted. Every valley shall be exalted. Yes, every Israelite will be exalted. However, so they get it, they get it, but they will be exalted. Two thirds will get it by having to go through nuclear fire and this tribulation that's coming. The 1144 will get it by getting delivered and keeping this word and then getting delivered in, sal in, in, in salvation through a chariot. And, and, and getting power and, you know, and glory and being really exalted and getting the ruling with a rod of iron and so on and so forth. <laughs> okay? And that's how, okay? But the scriptures say all Israel shall be saved. Okay? So even the two-thirds who come back through our loins, Lord, women, we are those men. Um, they'll live, they'll live good too. They'll be exalted above the heathens and everything as well. They won't be in slavery no more. Okay? So it's that every valley shall be exalted. Okay? So we'll be brought up. All right? Israel will be brought up. 
and every mountain and hill shall be made low. So that's when you go back to Micah 4. It says, but in the last days it shall come to pass, which we are living in the last days of the last days, okay? That the mountain, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. So if his if his mountain is being established on top of the mountains, and again the mountains are speaking of a government, then that means these these mountains that he's being established upon, that he's establishing his government upon, will be brought low. Okay? Because if something is higher than something, that means something is lower than something. Okay? If um I have this um this water bottle, okay, if I put this water bottle on top of this water bottle. Okay, this one's on top of it, which is made now higher than this one, and this one's lower than, than this one. It's, it's simple amoth, okay, which means truth, okay? One plus one equals two. That's the truth. You can't debate that. And if someone does, they're an idiot. That's why we look at people on the highways and byways who come up against us, we look at them as dotards. Dotard meaning an imbecile or foolish, okay? It says that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the, in the top of the mountains. So the, the top, on the top of the mountains. So these mountains will be lower than the government that the Lord will establish pertaining to again, Isaiah 40 and 4, okay? It says every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low, okay? The crooked shall be made straight, so... That's for everybody. Ain't gonna be no more niggas and none of that shit. Alright? And the rough place is plain, okay? Everything's gonna be smooth. Smooth sound, man. Okay? These heathens need slavery. And these two-thirds need a missile and come back in their right mind. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> the microphone went again. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills. Okay, again, back to Isaiah 40 and 4. It says, every valley shall be exalted. Okay, let's just get that word exalted real quick. Uh, I think how you pronounce it is uh, Nasha. It said to lift up, bear up, carry, take, to lift, lift up, to bear, carry, support, sustain, endure, to take, take away, carry off, forgive, that's true, man. The elect 144 are going to be blameless. They're going to be forgiven, man. It says to be lifted up, to be exa uh, be exalted, to lift oneself oneself up, rise up, to be home, be carried, to be taken away, be carried off, be swept away. Oh, my gosh. To be taken away, be carried off, to be, uh, be swept away. These chariots are going to do that. If you get salvation, you're going to be swept away out of this... vessel is <laughs> sometimes you can only have words to describe this particular vessel that you're in it says be carried off so you're literally going to be carried off and carried up in a way it says be taken away out of this place it says to be lifted up literally going to be lifted up by a chariot out of this place okay to lift up exalt support aid assist and we're going to be assisted with this okay as long as we keep this faith okay yeah that's a heavy definition man it says um uh every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooks shall be made straight and the rough places plain okay all right back to michael form one but in the last days uh it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills again and be exalted above the, all the other governments and people shall flow into it people shall flow into it yes people shall flow into it okay it's a lot okay this is zachariah chapter four, uh, 14 verse 14 i'll start there and judah also shall fight at jerusalem Say, yeah, in Judah shall in Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. Okay, he's gonna have a strife. Okay, ultimately, when, one of my favorite uh, chapters, scriptures, uh, well, uh, chapters is Second Ezra, the thirteenth chapter. Okay, it says, in Judah shall fight at Jerusalem. Yahweh is gonna crack the skies, and he's gonna cleanse our land over there, and it, he's gonna assign chariots to come 
and get all his elect 144 from across the face of the earth. Okay. All right. But he's going to be in that particular set of land demolishing stuff. And that's why he's going to have blood all over his vesture. Okay. Like he was stepping in a wine press. Okay. Uh, Zechariah 14 and 14. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. It's not Yahweh Shai Judah. Okay. So he will be fighting and cleansing that land. And it's only going to be our. He's going to do it without labor. Like it says in 2 Ezra's 13 chapter, I want to say like the 38th verse, okay? And wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. So we're going to get all their spoil, okay? Gold and silver and apparel and great abundance, okay? It's all going to be gathered up, all right? We're going to get everything. And that's going to flow into the into the kingdom, okay? Continuing, it shall be, and so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and all the beasts that shall be in, the, in these tents as this plague, verse 16, and shall come to pass again another prophecy. <sighs> this whole thing I'm reading is a prophecy. That everyone that is left of the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? So right there, that shows you that all everybody's gonna flow, everything's gonna flow. Uh, in one accord into the kingdom of heaven into Jerusalem okay okay he's gonna flow into the people he's gonna flow into the Israelites okay it says and people shall flow un, uh, unto it like it says in Michael 4 and 1 okay back to Zechariah to keep proving the point it says it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem okay so again when you read 2nd Ezra 13 it talks about how they were scared but yet there's fight Okay, they're gonna fight, they're gonna come up against the lamb like it speaks of in Revelation. They're gonna lose miserably, like I said in 2nd Ezra 13. He's gonna do it without labor, like it says in Revelation. It's gonna happen in one hour. This is you're gonna be destroyed in an hour. Okay, that everyone that is left, so there's gonna be a mass destruction. And if you left, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, which is not a lot of people, but we're gonna preserve, we need slaves. Okay, and actually, we want, we want slaves. We can do everything, but we want slaves, okay? All right? It says that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. So if you left, okay, uh, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and keep the feast of the tabernacles, okay? Of the tabernacles. So all the heathens that are left after all this destruction, mayhem, okay? The righteous destruction. The ones that are left, you're going to have to go and flow up in there. And worship the King Yahweh Shai, the Lord of Hosts, Yahweh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and keep our, our our high holy days, man. Verse 17, and this is what happened if you don't do it. Verse 17, it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem, there again, that's proven in Michael 4 and 1, that people shall flow in uh, unto it, okay? To worship the King, the Lord of Hosts, even upon them shall be no rain and who is it and who is your how about shimmy i going to designate that that specific um task to the elect 144 we're going to go up in your shit and we're going to stop the rains with spiritual power man so you will be in a, in a drought you're going to be thirsty you're going to be hot okay we're going to let that sun beam down on you because we can hold the sun still if we if, we, if need be <laughs> okay so Anyone who doesn't want to come up and not abide, you ain't going to get no rain. Meaning you're not going to get no produce. Meaning you're going to get your ass beat for not getting no produce. <laughs> it's a lose-lose situation for us. Win-win for us. Okay? Okay? So verse 18, it says, And if the family of Egypt go not up, the family of bondage, okay, so our slaves, go not up and come, and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague. So if you still, if you slaves are still stubborn and still not coming up after we uh, cease your reign, there shall be a plague. We'll put a plague on you, man. Wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the uh, feast of tabernacles. We're just gonna kill you. We're just gonna kill you over and over again because you and the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of heaven is established forever and ever. So we'll always have dominion over you forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, like it speaks of in the book of Daniel. Okay, this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm telling you, man, 
because we can kill you and put you right back to that vessel that we killed you in and make you feel all the pain all over again. It's going to be a consistent thing. So you better come up and you better flow into it, uh, into Jerusalem, with all your, everything that you gathered up, all your gold, all your silver, and all your apparel in great abundance. You better, okay? Because it says in Michael 4 and 1, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Israel, uh, the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow un, unto it. Okay, so you're gonna come up, and you're gonna, and you're gonna do these specific things. Okay, and this is all gonna be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, let's go to Matthew six and ten. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Okay. All right. So these things that go on in heaven is gonna go on in earth, man. I think it's in the book of Ecclesiastes. It speaks about the earth abided forever. Okay? So the kingdom will abide forever. The kingdom of heaven will abide forever. It will always abide forever anyway. Okay? The Israelites will abide forever. Okay? Because it was given to the Israelites, not uh, any other nation. Okay? This, uh, that's why in Matthew, the first chapter, it says he will save his people. Okay? Be a savior for his people. Not for all the nations. His people. That is a particular, uh, particular meaning. And if it's talking about his people, and you know he's a Judite, that means the Israelites, okay? His people. He wasn't a Mo. Uh, Yahushua wasn't a Moabite. He wasn't a Ammonite. He wasn't an Ishmaelite. He wasn't Elam. He wasn't um, uh, Asher. He wasn't Put. Or, or, or put. You know, Mizraim. He wasn't them, man. He was an Israelite. It's that simple. He wasn't a part of the other 17 nations. He was a part of that one nation of Israel. Okay, so he said, come back to save his people, be a savior for his people. So it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Okay, all right, let's go to Revelation chapter 21. This is Revelation chapter 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, okay, for the first heaven. And the first earth were, were passed away. Like I said, the earth, heaven abides forever. But this first heaven and first earth is pertaining to you Edomites. This is y'all's heaven. This is y'all earth right now. Like it says in the book of Job 9 to 24, the, the, uh, the earth was given into the hands of the, uh, of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Okay, I think it says, if not, who is it? Okay, if it ain't this white man, who the hell is it? You know what I'm saying? Okay. So this is y'all's heaven. Okay. It, the earth was given to y'all. And y'all established your kingdom on in earth. Okay. Literally did the same thing. But on a carnal sense. And you, you ruled it terribly. So the Most High is going to pass that one away. He's going to establish a new heaven and a new earth. Okay. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the, he the first heaven and the first earth who passed away. And there was no more. And there was no more sea. Okay. All right, see, it's pertaining to the people, okay? Because it's going to be mass destruction, okay? All right, let's go to Isaiah 66 and 22. It's like, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me. Okay, this is Yahweh, Yahweh speaking, okay? It said, I shall remain before me. Yahweh is forever. He just exists. So in that case... The new heaven and new earth will abide forever. Okay? Say, the Lord, Yahweh Shemi, I was So shall your seed in your name remain. In your name remain. So Israel will always remain. Israelites will always remain. <laughs> Edom, Edom is not going to always remain. Their seed is not going to always remain. Okay? Like it says in um, Job, the 20th chapter, I think verse 7, if I'm not mistaken, it says they, they'll be passed away or something like that as their own dung, man. Like if you take a dump and flush a toilet, you don't see your shit again. Literally. It goes down the toilet, you don't see it again. That's how Edom is going to be, man. That's why when you read the book of Obadiah, they'll be gone forever, man. But Israel will, will be forever, okay? All right. Um, I'll go back to Micah 4 and 1. But in the days... And that in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the most of the house of the most high, the Habashim Yahshai, shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow into it. 
So we understand what the mountain is. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crook shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. Let's go to Isaiah 49 and 11. It says, and I will make all my mountains away, and my high will shall be exalted. Okay. Back to Michael 4 and 4 and 2. Okay. And it, and it says, um, and many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Most High. Again, again, it's saying, and the people shall flow unto it. Okay. It says, the, the nation shall come and say, come. And let us go up to the to the mountain of the Most High, to the to the, the established government, because it says shall it be be established, okay, and to the house of the the of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. They're gonna have to learn these law, statutes, and commandments, okay. And he will walk in his and we will walk in his path, for the law shall go forth of Zion, Israel, and the word. Uh, of the Lord from Jerusalem, and, it shall, and He shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, because they're gonna have to keep this. They're gonna have to keep the law, statutes, commandments. But it's gonna be in us, okay? It's gonna be in us. Prove that correct. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, okay? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. That's why we're in this predicament we're in. That's why we are a low valley, okay? That's why we're likened unto a valley. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, and that's the 1144, okay? After those days, saith the Lord, actually, that's all it is. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts, the heart, la'ab, meaning your mind, inward parts, again, your mind, and will be there. So, inward parts in your heart, so you have that inclination, a natural tendency to do so, okay? And will be their power, and they shall be my people, okay? Let's get another one. Let's go to Ezekiel 37 and I'll start at 24. Uh, Ezekiel 37, 24. And David, my servant, shall be a king over them. Okay? In the in the king, king is gonna be, you know, how about Shimmy How Shy? How how shy? We got King David, we got the 12, we got the 144, we got the angels, okay? And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall be, and they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe statues and do them, and they shall dwell in the land that I give unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell, uh, dwell therein. Even they, even they and their children, and the children's children forever and my my servant david shall be their prince forever more moreover so even with that moreover so i'm gonna give y'all life uh, abundant forever and king david the righteous ruler is gonna rule over y'all forever okay this, this is in the kingdom of, uh, of israel when the new heaven the new earth okay moreover okay i will make a covenant of peace with them it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever, or forever, uh, evermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their power, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel. Israel, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them ever, forevermore, okay? Let's get another one, okay? So those are two, two examples of, of the new covenant in um, in um, in the Old Testament. So now let's go to your New Testament uh, for you Bible thumpers who only think the new only applies in the New Testament, okay? Uh, I think it's 
Hebrews 8 and 7. For if that first covenant hath been faultless, okay, then should no uh, place have been sought for the second, okay? He says, for the first covenant have been followed. So if we abided by the first covenant, there would be no need for another covenant. But we broke, we broke the contract. We didn't abide by the contract. So we have to make the, the most high to make a new contract. Okay. Verse eight, for finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Again, he says, for finding fault with him, because we broke, as you know, as we read in Jeremiah 31. Okay, because we broke it. Okay, for finding fault with them, meaning we broke that covenant. He saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not any other nation, but he's going to make a new covenant. And this is for, oh my gosh. Christians are the dumbest people you can like ever run into because they're saying, Have fun trying to keep the old covenant. We're in the new covenant. So you're telling me you got all the law, statutes, commandments written in your inward part. You're telling me that King David is ruling over you right now. You're telling me that this kingdom you're in right now is going to rule forever and ever and ever and ever. You're an idiot. Okay? That's not, we're not in the new covenant. This is a prophecy that's about to come to pass. Okay? Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with the fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, so I had a bondage because they continue not in my covenant, okay? And I regarded them not, saith the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. I will write them in their heart. He reiterated what he just said. I'll put my laws in their mind and I'll write them in their heart, their mind, okay? And I will I'll be their power and they shall be uh, to me my people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. We ain't going to be on the highways and byways. We don't have to do that no more in the kingdom. We don't got to be on the highways and byways being like, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you got to know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Everybody's going to know who Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is because either he had salvation for him or he just kicked their ass. Oh, you're going to know that person who beat the shit out of you. Okay? You go, oh yeah, I know him. I right, yeah, I know I know who that is. Got my ass beat. Okay? I'm pretty sure everybody that Floyd Mayweather fought know who Floyd Mayweather Mayweather is now. Okay? I'm pretty sure uh Conor McGregor know who Flay, uh, Floyd Mayweather is. Alright. God Christians are retards. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother. Uh, saying, "No, Lord, for all shall know me, for the least, to, uh, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful and uh, to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. I will remember no more as pertaining to the elect. Okay, all, all of Israel, but you know, the, uh, the elect. Uh, Revelation 14, 14. They'll be blameless. Man. Okay, they'll be virgins. Okay, meaning." Because the Christians will watch this and be like, they have the hot sex. No meaning. I'm just going to get it. I'm just going to get it. Christians are retards. It irritates me. Uh, these are they which are not defiled with women. They are For they are virgins. They'll take that literally. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are re were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High, unto the Lamb. These are they which are not defiled with women, philosophies, and they are virgins, meaning they didn't get into those philosophies. Simple. When you when you go into the scriptures and look woman up, you read Proverbs, strange woman, Proverbs six, all that, uh, First Edges. Speaking about a philosophy, you really think Proverbs is speaking about a literal woman? It refers to wisdom as being a, a woman. Well, the scriptures liken Israel to a woman. Like, it's real easy to understand, but Isaiah uh, 29 and 10 is where they fall, fall short. So back to Michael 4 and 2. Okay. 
then I'm closing on this. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the Most High of Jacob, and he will teach us for his, uh, of his ways, and he will, he will walk in his paths. For the, the law shall go forth of Zion, the word of the Lord uh, from Jerusalem, and he, shall, and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into printing hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, uh, neither shall they learn war anymore. And you can read the rest on down. And that's particu uh, particularly what I wanted to bring out. They're going to beat their swords into plowshares because ultimately we're going to destroy everything. Yahweh is going to destroy everything. All their weapons, all their arsenal. There will be no more war because there will only be one people who would rot of iron breaking them into shivers okay that's why you have war today because everybody is trying to rule with a rod, a rod of iron but when you outside cracks the skies you can be like all right enough of that uh little kid child's play okay let's go to the big boy stuff okay my people okay that's simple so i hope y'all brothers was edified and, you, and hey keep hastening the day because you know this is coming man this is these are beautiful scriptures you know, you gotta think about it. You know, no more wars, gonna be straight peace. You gonna have uh, power over these heathens, man. So I'm gonna give all praises to the Howard by Shem and Shai. Give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do well. Peace, love, salutation to the 1144 first fruit. Like I always say, man, all hell's about to break loose. The chip is already here. So keep rooted, keep pushing in this thing, man. Stay with your eye, all right? Shalom.